I'm super excited to share my quarantine side project with everyone. It's called Bud, and it's a full stack web framework written in Go for developers who love to ship things. I built Bud because I'm an indie hacker at heart, and indie hackers don't have the luxury of a full company to support them. They need to be able to build, ship, and iterate quickly towards success or move on to the next thing. That's why indie hackers love full stack web frameworks like Rails, Laravel, and Django. Bud aims to be the full stack web framework for the Go ecosystem. I chose Go because it's easy to learn, it's fast, it's type safe, and it has an excellent ecosystem of libraries and tools. This makes Go very productive and also just fun to write. That's why Go with Bud is a match made in heaven. Now I want to show you Bud in action. Let's build a minimal hacker news clone in about 10 minutes with Bud. So I'm first going to open up my web browser here. And I'm going to go to github.com slash livebud slash bud. Bud is free and open source MIT licensed. I'm going to scroll down to the installation script here. And then I'm going to pop open VS Code. And I've got a terminal here ready for us. I'm going to install Bud. It'll take just a few seconds. And then I'm going to verify that Bud is installed. And it looks like we've got Bud running. So let's actually start our, let's create um, our first Bud application. So I'll run Bud create. And I'll use the dot because we're in an empty Hacker News directory already. And this will set up Bud for us. So it'll install some Node modules, uh, Go modules. Um, but you'll notice that Bud is quite minimal. It doesn't start out with a lot. As you write code, Bud will write, will generate code alongside you to kind of write a lot of the boring glue code that you would otherwise normally have to write. Let's start the development server. So I'm going to run call Bud run, and I'm going to open up the development server here. Look at that. We've got the development server up and running. That is super exciting. But that's just the beginning. Let's actually create something with Bud now. We're building a Hacker News client after all. So I'm going to open up another terminal here, and I'm going to do Bud new controller. And I'm going to call where the, the first page we're going to be creating is an index page here. So and they're going to be listing a bunch of stories out. So I'll say stories, and then I'll map that to the index page. And we're going to create an index and show route. If you've used Laravel or Rails in the past, this will look somewhat familiar to you. We're going to go ahead and scaffold um, a controller and some views. So we've created scaffolded the root controller and two views, the index view and the show view. And you'll notice that live reload is built right into Bud. So as we've added these these files, it's it's reloaded the welcome page into an empty um, story page. And so we've got this controller, and this controller is is when we when we issue a GET request, it's um, returning this array of stories, and that array of stories then um, gets rendered here, but we don't actually have any story set. We've just returned an empty array. So let's actually get some stories from Hacker News. So the first thing I'm going to do is install a Hacker News client. So I'll do go get github.com Matthew Miller Hacker News. I have created a simple Hacker News client for demo purposes. And I'll plop that right in here. I'll get, say hacker news that client. Just delete that comment here. And let's give it another save. Okay. VS Code Go is a bit flaky right now. Um, I'm on the last straw before upgrading to the the new um, the new language server, but Bear with you for right now. OK, so we've got this uh, Hacker News client here. Let's actually use it in our stories. So I'll do controller.hn, and then I'll, we're going to be looking for the front page here. So 
We're going to return the front page. The front page returns um, store a list of stories and an error, but the Hacker News stories is different than the scaffolded stories here. So I'm actually going to update this here and just say Hacker News dot story, and that will fix our error. And you'll see as soon as we fix the error, it actually reloaded the page with our data. And so what is happening here? We've got a like this table here, and so. What, what we've done is we've fetched the, all the front um, the stories from the front page of Hacker News as JSON and and passed it through to our view here. And our view is essentially scaffolded to turn a JSON object into a table. So we just loop over whatever keys we get from our controller index action. So that's pretty cool. We've already got something something to look at here. Um, let's see how the show action works. So when we click on an ID, we want to show a story, and that actually calls this action here. Well, we're just returning an empty story right now, so let's fix that. So let's return c.hackernews.find, and we'll find by the story. And it looks like, oop, I'm missing the context here, so let me fix that. And Oh, yes, it's the same problem as before. We need to return a hacker news story, not a default scaffolded story. So I can actually remove this generated story now because we no longer need it. And would you look at that? Before I even got a chance to look over here, it's already been um, refreshed and is showing our data. And so this is actually all linked up now. So now all of our stories are linked up. So the data is, is working, which is awesome. But that's not looking very good. So let's actually clean this up. Now, you may have noticed already that we're using Svelte files for our views, but ships with a modern JavaScript framework stack, front end stack. And so it ships with Svelte out of the box, and it will ship with React soon as well. We don't really care what front-end framework you go with, um, it sh but will eventually work with, with many different kinds. We're agnostic to that. We just want to use a, a modern JavaScript front-end framework. OK. Let me clean this up a little bit. And so I'm going to actually jump into my, I'm going to create a header component here. And because I want to I want to clean this part up first. and one of the cool things about Bud is things that start with a capital letter are designated as components versus things that are lowercase are pages. And so you can actually put components in the same uh, folder as, as your pages, and then you can reference them locally like that. So I'm going to pull in some code from my clipboard, actually. So let's grab this here. And it's just some basic HTML and some scoped CSS. So we've added the header here. And let me import it into the index now. So import header from header.svelte. And then I can just replace this header with that. And would you look at that? It, it live reloaded and replaced the header. That's looking starting to look pretty snazzy. Let's do something about the table now. So story.svelte, we want to render each story as a, as a separate component. And I'm going to jump into my clipboard again here and copy and paste some boilerplate story code. And all this is doing is importing a relative date library, timeago.js. Um, it's formatting some URLs. It's formatting some comments. And then it's displaying uh, each story, and we have a little bit of CSS to go along with it. Let's actually install our time ago relative date library with npm install time ago.js. OK, and now we can import this story component into our index here and then use it. So, what do we get actually from the controller, the index action, and the controller? is a list of stories. So we want to actually loop over each story as stories as story and render each story like this. And would you look at that? 
we've got a formatted list now of Hacker News Stories. But we've also got this table down below, which we don't need anymore. So let's just remove that. And we've cleaned that up. This is looking pretty good, isn't it? All right, but we still need to do something about our show page here. That needs a bit of work. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull in my header again, import header from header. And I'm also just going to pull in the story right away as well. OK, let's do, let's pull in the header. There we go. OK, looking better already. And then in the show action, we've actually passed a single story through. And so let's uh, actually render that story like this. We don't need the, to loop over it. OK, so that's looking pretty decent. Um, but we also want to display each of the children as well, the comments. And we want to display them as a thread of comments. And so I'm going to create one more component here, comment.svelte. And then I'm going to pull in a bit more code um, just for the comments. Uh, we've got, again, the relative date library. We've got a toggle here to um, toggle showing or hiding the comments. And then we've got some HTML. One of the interesting things about Svelte is that you can recursively render components. And so that helps with um, nested, nested comments. Uh, you can go infinitely nested. And then we finally have a bit of scoped CSS. Let's import that comment component into our show page here. Whoops. And let's see, each story has a list of children comments. And so we want to actually iterate over each story dot uh, children as comment and then we'll render a comment for each of them. And I'm using this shorthand here, which is essentially the same as just this. It does the same thing. In fact, it auto-completes to fix it up. And would you look at that? We now have some beautiful comments. And it looks like the toggling is also working as expected. And just as before, we're kind of done with the table. And so we can kind of we can clean that up. And that's about it. That we've I don't know how long it's taken, but we've quickly created a Hacker News clone with Bud. The last thing I want to show you is one of the great benefits of using Go as the compile target essentially for for Bud. We can we can run Bud build now once we're done. And what this is doing is kind of bundling up the whole application into a single executable that we can just copy onto some server somewhere and run. Uh, it takes a little bit of time because it's bundling, it's embedding things like V8, it's minifying files, it's doing all sorts of stuff. But in a few more seconds, it should complete. So then I will run bud app. Oops, I've already got my server running here. So let me go to my other tab and close that. And then I'll run bud app, and we get the exact same thing. The last thing I just want to show you is that if I move bud app into tempter slash app, and I just call tempter slash app, it still works. It's all in that binary. It doesn't, it's no, there's no more relative paths. That's the beauty of compiling to Go and building with Go. So that's all I want to show you today. Um, I'm really hopeful that you'll give Bud a go. It's still early days, but the foundation is in place, and I'm just super excited where this is heading. So I hope you'll go to github.com livebud slash bud and um, give it a try, open issues. Um, you can email me. Um, just let's start the conversation. Thanks so much. Appreciate it.